All right, so I already got one of the DLA fogs kind of mocked up. Kind of see it there. It's not fully bolted in, but it's pretty close. So if you look on the 9091 bumpers, we've got this little recess already here. This is what the DLA fog looks like outside of the car. It's kind of already fits the contour of what's going on there. Um, and it's got a little bracket that goes around the outside here and here's the center of where the bulb is. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna kind of put some paint on the center here on the edges. I'm gonna push this in, kind of eyeball center there and leave some paint on the on that. I'm gonna get some holes going there. So just some of this touch of paint, it's the same color as my car, so it'll contrast well on the black. Just gonna put a little strip On there, closing side, and there you go. So the center kind of just left a mark there, and that's where I'm going to drill. All right, so now I've got a hole saw. I'm choosing a one and three quarter inch. It's so a little bit bigger than light bulb socket, and if we gotta open it up some more, I'll use a Dremel. All right, so now the actual bulb here will fit through this hole that we just cut. So now I'm gonna take that paint like I already tried to do the first time, and we're gonna put it on the little arms again here. Simply just gonna push it in. Perfect. So you can see the two spots there of where it actually hit. All right, so now I've got a quarter inch drill bit. I'm just gonna kind of go on that. And I'm gonna go maybe three down, three up. Or sorry, go in the center of it, one down, one up on both sides. Try to put the light back in and see if I can see these actual sides coming through. Now, what I'm gonna do is called chain drilling. I'm gonna kinda of put a hole down here. It's gonna be as close as I can connecting to that hole. And I can later on just take a Dremel and just route it out essentially. All right, mine was off a little bit to the right of it. I can see if I slide it in on the right side. I'm a little off on the left side there. Not by a lot, but it's a tad. So I just kind of open this up a little bit with that quarter inch drill bit. I'm gonna take the Dremel now. If it's there, I'm just gonna kind of go right up. All right, so you can see the bracket goes in there just fine comes through both sides. I end up opening the holes a bit bigger, but I still started with the quarter inch a little bit and then this, I just kind of went up and down just to kind of make it open so I can slide this in nice and easy. So now, what you don't see on your bracket is, if you look at the bracket here now, there are some nuts on the inside there. I essentially welded, well, tacked the nuts to it. So the intention here is this is going to kind of go in the hole. This is going to be able to come back. I'll be able to secure it like so on the sides. And then, and then on the side here, I haven't finished it yet, but we're going to take this piece of aluminum here. I'm going to make it kind of match a rough pattern that's on this. So I can bolt this to the back side of it. Sorry, wrong direction. This is gonna attach here like so. And this is going to bolt to the car body. Now when you're looking at your bumper, um, some people back in the day, and they're still in the forms, you can find them. They essentially just took this bracket that was shown earlier, folded it up top or on the bottom of the light. So it sat like so. 
something like this and then just drilled through the bumper itself underneath and secured it um you can do that what i'm doing probably is gonna be the easiest method by all means so i'm gonna have to drill that into the, the frame of the car and i'm gonna drill and tap two holes or you could rib nut it i'm probably just gonna drill and tap it to secure this aluminum bracket to the car and to that it's definitely gonna be stable granted if i go take the bumper off in the future i'm gonna have to remember just to you know unbolt at least the two that are attached to the chassis so the fog lights come with it you could if i had a welder handy with me i would probably just attach this to the back weld a little piece that comes off like so and then straight back up and i would probably just attach it right into the um the support beam and that may be something i'll do in the future but for now this is how i'm going to do this install so i may think it's a little out of there not necessarily needed but that's what i'm going to be doing for now all right, this is like a bracket that came with one of the cold air intakes that I had bought messing around with. So I basically took, I bolted this, one of the holes lined up, so I bolted it in, and then I back drilled the other hole so they would line up. Now I kind of just roughly bent this, I already had these two holes drilled in it. Um, so I'm gonna try and see if this will work instead of making that piece that I just showed you a second ago. So this is how I'm gonna have to install it. You stick that arm through like so. Feed the two wires through first. This might take a little bit of some finagling here. This is kind of stuck out. You can see I'm at a pretty big angle. Kind of like so. We're just gonna try to feed one of the bolts that came with it. Just kind of twist the light with the bracket and kind of find its home. Now I'm going to try to feed the bracket. I know it's hard to see, but I'm trying to feed the other end of the bracket in through that other hole. And there it is. So now I can, I have barely any access over this right side, but you can try to just get it a little bit tighter. Now on this side, this is the side that maybe somebody might be able to see if someone's like really looking for it or something. So I'm just gonna take like one of the, like a beauty washer of sorts in case someone does see it, just kind of so it looks a little cleaner, I guess. Now I'm gonna push the bracket as far back as it will go on the adjustment since it's like a slot. All right, so she's nice and snug. All right, so I already drilled one of the holes here. Now I'm going to drill the other one with a five millimeter drill bit. The drill does not fit that great in here with the bumper on, but it will fit. Now it's not very thick. All right, so since I went in a little bit of an angle, that drill bit will open it up pretty close to what it needs to be. It's not exactly a five millimeter drill bit. Now the other one, it looks like I only got maybe about two threads, maybe two and a half. It's not very thick here. So we'll see how rigid it feels and holds up. And if it doesn't hold up very well, we'll go to rib nuts. So there's the final overall, what the bracket looks like while it's mounted up in there. Drill and tap those two holes. Those two are the nuts that I were welded to the back of the bracket. All right, so I've just started to, I'll just kind of Route a wire. The, the game plan is going to be route a wire from the passenger fog to the driver's side fog, the, the power that is, and then route the one power wire from there into the car. So I should be able to feed it right up in, up in here about. So I'm going to loom it and stuff so it looks a little nicer. Um, so I got to take the front bumper off, fender off, and I'll be honest, I don't remember when I did some of the wire tuck if I finalized the clamps or holding the wire on. So I'll be able to do that now and make the loom for the fog line harness. So this is the secondary wire. It's going to run from the wire, from the actual fog light into the bay. All right, so now take a piece of heat shrink. All 
Okay, so previously, here's the two holes where the bracket that I made that it mounts to the fog light's gonna go. Now, I decided I'm just gonna put a ground from the fog light to here on both sides and just run a power wire from one to the other. I could run the ground from the ground, like ground from this fog light to that fog light, but I feel like having the ground closer to the chassis would be better. So I'm just gonna put it right above here, just kind of centered above where the bracket's gonna sit. All right, so originally I did show you, I did cut one wire to connect fog light to fog light for ground. Um, I'd rather not do that now, I just kind of overthought it, or I just kind of thought differently now. I'm just gonna connect, still have these connected to each fog light, and then the opposing end, I'm just gonna have a ring terminal, which is gonna go to the holes I just drilled in the frame and just kind of bolts in with a, you know, with a beauty washer or something like that. So I've got my two connectors already cut now. Ring terminal, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rip off this little uh, black plastic here, because I'm gonna put heat shrink over it anyways, and I wanna be able to, So, I mean, you can't crimp them, I'm not against that. I'm just trying to solder as much as possible. I did that to the same things as these. I just kind of moved the plastic shield back and then I put it back over it. You can kind of see now, she's soldered joint. Soldering iron definitely needs some, uh, needs to be replaced. It's been beat. All right, so here's our little ground connector now. I haven't told this in the last videos. I keep using this stuff. It's from Alex Tech. It's all over Amazon. Um, they just sold it in spools. I don't need half the stuff, half the amount of stuff that I bought, but I've used more than I actually intended. So this is quarter inch. I kind of use this, I guess, for one wire, two wires, kind of depends what you're doing. Um, so I'm just going to kind of line this up roughly there and there ish. Many people ask me what size I used. I don't remember. I'm sorry. I should have used it. Should have mentioned it during most of the videos. Take a little torch here and just kind of gently. See, it's kind of stretchy. Cool. So I'm actually going to take this now and I'm going to feed this inside this. Like so. Now I could have slid this on first, which may have helped me in certain aspects here. Um, I could have used smaller heat shrink, but here we are. Take your torch lighter. All right. So now, I did it the same one already. I've got two ground terminals now, essentially to go connect from the back of the fog light. Show a little hole I just drilled in the body of the car. All right, so now I've got my two ground connectors, put those on the side. Here's what I'm running for power, if you can imagine this right now. This side is gonna to connect to the passenger side. This side is gonna to connect to the driver's side, which is essentially connecting both powers from both fog lights together. And then I, I teed in over here, which I just ran a bunch of excess wire that's gonna go inside the car. So pushing that aside now, what I wanna kinda of do is run some more of that loom across these and probably just kind of tie these in next to each other after they're both loomed like a zip tie, just to kind of make it one harness that I could remove together. All right, so here it is, passenger side, got it all loomed up, coming around to driver's side, then it's gonna split off, and as you can see, it's got a bunch of excess wire, so I'm gonna to try to route. All right, so I was having a hell of a time putting it up in through here to come up through there. So I did, and I drilled a 3 ace hole right there, right out of the wire, and, and I just zip tied it. I was kind of checking back in some pictures. I added the rubber clamps, like I did the fuel pressure uh, gauge over on the passenger side. I ended up just zip tying everything here. And I know some people may think, oh, it zip ties, it's a Honda, blah, 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 whatever the case is. Um, I don't have any intention at this moment to run hood latches. So this hood cable is not going anywhere. It's a stable brace. And honestly, I would say you don't see it, but you don't. But it's nice and snug up against there. So the big one is for all the headlights and the corner lights blah 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 whatever so this other single guy running through here now is the fog light as you can see it's going to come down here and it's going to route across so what i'm going to do though is i'm going to open up this hole right here to three eighths i'm going to put a little clamp there so i can route the uh wire here so it doesn't just have the potential of dangling in here potentially hitting the wheel these might look like they would but they don't because these go to the corner lights so i'm going to take my three eighths drill bit all right, so there's my nice 3 8 hole. So 
I'm just gonna screw the rivet nut on here. If you haven't seen what these are, it's basically just a threaded insert that gets squeezed and there's a little knurling on the outside. So you just kind of thread it on the install tool. Stick it in the hole. Put even pressure up against it. You should be able to unscrew with this back knob here. All right, I can kind of still feed that through there now. So to give you an idea what it looks like again, see how it's just kind of routing down through there. I will sort of just tuck it in, pull it like that. Okay, so here's the fog light switch. It's one that kind of mimics what Toyota uses. So it's in my Tacoma, so I kind of felt like it was relevant to use for the color of the paint. This is from Greg Parts, uh, the 3D printed parts. I don't know if you can see it or not on here, but I laid some scribe lines on here. Essentially what I did was just took a pair of calipers, grabbed an approximate width, let's say just say 660, grab the width of this, let's just say 945, 944, split the difference and basically just drew scribe lines all around it. So now I'm just going to poke some holes in it and take a Dremel sewer so we can get this uh, fit nice and, nice and centered on here. All right, so I thought I had it on record, but it was still on a time lapse. So it fits pretty well inside there now. It's pretty snug. It ain't coming out. Um, and these are the Greg Parts again replacement ones. They're a little beefier than the original ones, which is good, in my opinion, since I it's got a pretty. You can kind of maybe see how much wall thickness it has there left on each side. I don't remember exactly what it was. I maybe like 150 thousandths or 200 thousandths. I have to look again. But so the debate was between this switch or this switch. Now this switch turns on. It just kind of sits like that in your car. That would light up when the fog lights are on. This one will wire up and it basically, when my headlights are on or my, my instrument lights are on, this is lit up white and then push it in, I guess, and it'll you know light up the fog lights too. The added bonus between this one is it came with a plug. All right, so I didn't bother showing this, but here's the plug to the connector that's gonna come up through here. Um, so I loom these in two different groups here. It is essentially the green one is gonna be, I'm gonna connect it from the fuse box. It's gonna be the like, 12 volt from the fuse box. And the red and orange next to it is going to be the fog light power, essentially. And I separated it because there's also another red with a uh, yellow stripe here. And this one's what's going to go to the, when I, you know, signal my, when I turn on my dash lights, this will turn on that light. And then obviously the black, this is another, this is a ground that's going to go up in there. I'm going to basically ground to the same spot I did the headlight there. Now the way I'm getting power is how I did it for my gauges. I basically added a power source here which is gonna be this new one here, which is going into block, I think I put it in block three, I think that's what I did. There's just nothing there on the fuse box, so it's just got power. Um, and the other one I tied it into is the, the tail light instrument lights, which is this guy, which was gonna be the dimmer switch here. Again, I think I should have another video, but they're pretty snazzy. It's basically a little fuse tap in here. This plugs in there, and then whatever was going to it, you give it its fuse, and then the fuse you so choose for the uh, the piece you're connecting it to. So, that being said, let's uh, bolt this all in here. All right, so let's recap everything we just did for the fog lights. What I didn't show you is, if you can look down there, I added a connector there with a rib nut, one there, and there's one down there too. So, if we get underneath the car, you can see the wires tying in and they're going underneath the cross member. We showed that right up to the fender well. Came into the door and here's what it looks like. Everything's butt connected there. Again, I soldered everything. Just sort of zip tied it up. I'll zip tie that one up there too. So all the wires are nice and tight. Out of the way. And once we put the cover on, all clean. And there's the connector. All right, so it's completely dark right now. So when I flip this to the dash lights, you can notice down in the bottom left, my fingers should be kind of going away on your screen. My fingers going over it. It says the fog light itself is lit. So that goes on with the instrument lights. When I push the button, the top part, the actual fog light part is lit. So I'm gonna come up here. You can see I got no headlights on. There's headlights on. Might have some small tweaking still. I can turn the fog lights on independently. 
Now, as I can see, it looks like the right one looks pretty good. The left one, it looks like I need to angle up just a little bit, maybe. Like it's a little too low, maybe a little over to the left. So not much, not too bad on an adjustment that I need though. The camera makes it look way worse. With headlights, there it is. Let's get out and take a look. I know this is a weird part of the video considering it's dark. So that's with the parking lights on. So we can look down straight down the beam. Actually, so the beam looks like it's pretty, it looks like it's pretty close to how they're angled. Looks like maybe this one just needs to angle down then just a little bit from the perspective. When we look, I'm on the passenger side of the vehicle. With the headlights on. So they are two different beams, but it's one bad mamma jamma. All right, so that was maybe a little bit longer of a video, but hopefully it helps some of you. And I know there's many other ways you can install those. It's just the way that I chose to do it for the time being. Now to update currently, I got some other things that just came in I'm gonna do to the car, that'll be another video. But <clears throat> there is no car here right now. Um, so the bubbles that I showed you before in past videos, I ended up working at the paint shop with cylinder warranty. Um, they took the car in and is being fixed this week. It is now Thursday the 19th. He told me he'd call me today. Maybe I can pick it up tomorrow. That is my hope. I am super nervous. I'm hoping it comes back as good as it's looked, just minus a couple of the bubbles that were in the paint. Um, that aside, not to show you, but what I am doing is I'm making plates. I guess to kind of show you. Kind of making some plates to plug some holes in the firewall so I don't just have open holes. Um, I ordered uh, CJ's wiring. Uh, firewall plug with a grommet to route the main wire harness through um, that plate is for the where the the uh, heater hoses come through I'm going to convert the cigarette lighter into a USB port physically not to charge but it's gonna be hooked up to the ECU so that way the ECU can just be tucked away and you can just simply plug my laptop right into the cigarette lighter and that'll hook up to the ECU um, that aside there's some other little small things I'm doing here and there Fixing the wiring up, I'm going to try to drive out to Pensacola for like a little car show and a drift event and we'll see how that works out. Um, other than that, I'm going to try to keep the rest of this now short. So again, everyone, thanks for following. Any comments, concerns, what's down below? Um, yeah, other than that, again, everyone, thanks. I greatly appreciate it. Instagram has been a, a new avenue, I guess, for me to share the car that I'm not, uh, I was not really used to using and I've kind of grown a little keen to it. So if you're not following me on there and you want to see just updated pretty pictures that I take. Photography is a second hobby of mine, or used to be, and I've just kind of re gotten into it now. I still have all my camera gear. So now that I've got the car running, it's kind of something I enjoy shooting pictures of. The Instagram is literally the same as my YouTube channel. It's just Justin Goodell. Um, all right, again, so now I'm, I'm done. So again, thank you so much for everyone that has followed and kept up with this build. It is a huge inspiration for me to keep moving. I'm so happy with how everything's turning out. I am just super nervous right now about how the paint is gonna come out and I'm really hoping I get it back tomorrow and it looks as good as it did so I can just be back in its rightful little home and I can move the cornhole boards and everything else out. All right, again, thanks everyone. Hope you guys have a good week.